about this one. This thing just turns. I'm gonna try to uh, repair this one. So today is all about repairing my valve cover uh, helicoil or uh, the tread. This thing has uh, come down some more. I used to uh, make it here on my driveway, but look at this now. It's already on the, on the ground. And I can't really afford to have one of the uh, mounting screw uh, thread being broken. I know I still have three of them that this will be uh, secured, but the reason why is this cover is the one that holds my ignition coil. And as you can see, I put some uh, sealant all over it just to keep it in place. So uh, the order of our business would be I'll make sure that I put some uh, coverings on there. And I'll just use a, uh, some rag. Or if you have a piece of paper, you can do that. But uh, I prefer the, uh, the rag because it catches some of the, uh, the, metal, the metal flakes. Just make sure. Uh, just make sure everything is all uh, covered up. And to find out what's uh, what size you're gonna be needing, if you already knew uh, what size, that would be great. And there's always a help out there. Or you can always search it on the internet. And I just happen to have. Uh, one of these this is metric this is to find out what what size the, uh, the thread size you have and let me just show you 1.0 right there one and you just kind of put it together and if you don't see any uh, space or gap, like so. So if you uh, put a different uh, size on there, it'll look funky. I'm going to try uh, just to show you a thread pitch of 1.25. There. See, you'll see a gap there so we already know the uh, the thread pitch is 1.0 metric and this is a uh, m6 the diameter of the bolt size itself and now already know what size of uh, like I said earlier this is the uh, the drill that I've, I've been needing. It's a quarter. It's one quarter right here. And let's go check how much, uh, how deep this thing is. About that much, about a half an inch. I'll just put a stopper on there. You don't want to go too deep. That's a valve cover, so remember now, right there. And I'm just gonna secure this. And attach it to my uh, air motor. 
just make sure when you drill this you're going in straight like this one here the valve cover is not really quite a horizontally flat you kind of an angle so you just have to just make sure that uh, you're going in flat with it on the flange So now we're gonna use this. The one that it's supplied with. It came in with the uh, the tool. And also the same thing, make sure you're going in straight. It helps when you uh, spray some lubricant on there when you drive it, drive your uh, your tap. Just make sure when you uh, put your uh, tap screw, you're going in straight. Just take your time. There's no rush. Just move this thing uh, back and forth like that. When you fold some, uh, some struggling or it's getting tight, just back it off. Just move it increments of a time. Or sometimes it's uh, it requires to clean off the, the top screw do it I'll show you what I mean see how where all the debris was collected it's right there so you just clean them off Since I have access to air, I'll just give it a one blow. Again, make sure you have like a safety glasses and that way you protect your eyes for any debris that's gonna blow off. And don't worry about how deep you're gonna go in. I mean, it's gonna stop by itself once you hit the rock bottom, right there. And you just, when you back it out, if it's getting tight, just give it a back and forth. Sorry about the noise again. I live next to the airport. Look how much uh, debris got collected. I'm just gonna give it another uh, air blow. If you have vacuum, you can vacuum it. That's it. Now I'm ready to put on the uh, the helicoil. Set this up. Just to let you guys know, I'm, this is not the original bolts that goes to that uh, valve cover, for the uh, the center. This is the one that it's supplied with. This is OEM. And I think the reason why I pulled the thread off is because um, uh, it's too short. But I don't have the whole set. That's why I'm using one of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two of these, two holy coil. This will cover the whole, the whole thing. And I think it should be enough. Yeah, two of these. And this is the uh, tool I'm going to use. 
the one that came with the uh, with the kit. And at the bottom of the uh, one side of the bottom of the uh, helical, it has this a bent one right there. bent right there so it run across the center that one it goes here it, the tool catches it ah, this is all bent up let me fix this first my tool broke down on me this is what the or supposed to be there's two of them and one side broke off and that's supposed to go in like so I can still use it you know, but uh, I just have I made some uh, an alternate tool right here. I just made one, and this is meant to be broken. Once once it's on there, it's inside this one here. It's either you just need to uh, pick it off or hit it with the uh, like a screwdriver or just just or a, well a needle. This is too small that the needle nose cannot. You can't put a needle nose on there, but you can just push it out. And we'll just, I'll just go ahead and uh, insert this in. Again, if you have a, a, a Loctite, you can do so. And just thread it in. Till it stops. that and I think I'm, I'm just gonna use a pick let me see if I can push it out of the way like that I think it's broken So now I'm ready for the next one. Just align it on the slot. If it happens to stick out, if it's too long, you can always uh, cut it up with your uh, ply art. Uh, or something like this one here for example once it's on there there's no you can't get it back you can't there's no return See how it is? It's, it's protruding. It's not flush. It's not flush on the on that flange. So now, now I'm just gonna cut it off. And at the time, I didn't know how how deep it will be. Otherwise, I could have just cut the the helical before I I thread it in. But once it's thread in, you won't be able to to get it out in one piece without breaking it. And now it's either I'm just use a die grinder and just flush it out. Let me see if I can cut it with the uh, dikes. A 
here with water. I think that's it. Yeah. It's still sticking out. See if I could thread this in. A bit too tight. That's how you repair a broken uh, thread or a pulled out thread. And now I just need to uh, remove all this makeshift cover. And let me just blow it off just a little. Moment of truth. Put it on. Cool. That's it. And the rest. Let me put the rest of them. Yeah, it's not really that hard to, uh, to repair a, a broken thread, guys. Um, all it needed really is just make sure you have the tool to do it, tools to do it. And a little bit of a, a guts. Other than that. Cool. So now I don't have to worry about this popping up. You know, like uh, it might cause a misfire when I'm doing a run. You'll never know. Well, that's just about it on how I repaired my uh, broken threads on my valve cover. And uh, it's not really that hard. Everyone can do it as long as you get the proper tooling. And all it needs is just some of your time. and a little bit of determination on how to repair things and as far as like the uh, my G23 uh, VTEC uh, update it's almost end of May and I still haven't got a call from uh, my machine shop and hopefully by uh, first week or second week of June if nothing's happening then I'll just give them a call but in the meantime, I'm still collecting parts and hopefully it will be a, a green, you know, set to go as soon as I get my block. Okay, and uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys back next episode. Bye-bye.